Welcome to Savvy Talks, the podcast that explores the world of earning money online with your host, Chris Maridano. Each week, Chris brings you insightful conversations with experts and entrepreneurs from various industries, sharing tips, strategies, and inspiring stories to help you on your online money making journey. From managing your finances to developing a winning mindset, Savvy Talks covers all aspects of building a successful online business. So sit back, relax, and tune in to learn from the best in the business on Savvy Talks with your host, Chris Marie Danu. Welcome to another episode of Savvy Talks podcast, where we talk about money, mindset, habits, and motivation. And for today's episode, we have another amazing guest. She helps creatives, artists, healers, coaches go outside their comfort zone and do what they've been dreaming of. So help me welcome Miriam Alawi. It's good to have you here, Miriam. And before we start, let's have the audience know about you, your background, and what you do. Great. Thank you, Chris, for inviting me. Um, yeah, so I'm a life coach for people from the global majority. I prefer to use that term than people, um, than BIPOC, which I find to be a little bit more reductive. So people who um, identify themselves as people of color, people from countries, the global South, indigenous folks, black folks, and I help them uh, realize their dreams of becoming artists, creatives, uh, healers, um, coaches, so those kind of things. And I, at the same time, I also work as an artist myself. I'm a dancer and choreographer, and it's something that I've been doing for many, many years now. Um, and my story is that I am from Morocco, so it is a country in the global south. It's uh, in North Africa. And I moved to Canada, where I live now, with this dream of um, becoming a professional dancer. And uh, when, uh, yeah, I came to Canada, it was, you know, of course, it was a lot of work to be able to realize this dream. But now I am a professional dancer. I perform and I choreograph and I even have my own dance company that's called Jesed, uh, which means body in Arabic. So there is lots that I can talk about. <laughs> Yeah, and that's really just so many things going on. And you're also doing coaching at the same time, the dancing, which is, I love dancing too. <laughs> so I'm kind of like really amazed how you manage this too. And is it okay to just ask, like, how are you managing both of them? Like running two businesses and running two different careers. Is is it like, how is it for you? Yeah, that's a great question. Yeah, thanks. Um, so with the dance, um, the company that I have is a not-for-profit, but I also uh, perform for other people. And um, so what helps me most is with schedule to just keep certain days for um, the dance career and then have other days specific for coaching, especially the client work. So I only see clients on specific days. And uh, right now is just two days a week. Um, and I want to keep things separate like that. And for me, the best way to do it is through my, you know, my schedule because yeah, yeah, life is full. There's lots of things going on for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And I know that you are <laughs> coaching people to really get out of their comfort zone. And I've noticed that there are also others who are still starting to, or trying out, like I want to go there, but is still holding their, um, self back and for you who is juggling two things would you recommend them also to just take that first step to get there and try what they've been dreaming of but still keep that insurance or comfort zone for now of like maybe they're doing a full-time job or maybe they're doing studying or something yeah yeah no that's a great question yeah for people who um yeah all of us dreamers sometimes we feel like we need to give all of our time for this dream to make it happen but that's actually not true even just a little bit can really create magic like a, one step at a time and a consistent small amount of, of um, dedication uh, can really make a huge difference 
um, of course, you know, being an artist, for example, you have to uh, practice your craft, you have to practice your art, you have to become, uh, you know, have some skills in it. But even just putting a little bit helps a lot, especially if it's consistent versus, you know, having maybe an intense time where you just you know, work on your art, but then you don't touch it and you don't even think about it for, for you know, weeks or sometimes even months. And then you come back at it. It's always hard when you have to start again. It's almost like it feels like you have to start again. But if um, consistently you put some effort, and I even remember I had this ballet teacher. Um, I asked him, I remember, how can I improve? And he gave me this uh, beautiful image of the lake. And or like, um, you know, you know, in French, you say mar. It's like a puddle. You know? Yeah. <laughs> How do you um, how does it how does it become a lake? It's really just one drop at a time, like one drop after a drop after a drop after a drop that creates more and more water, more and more water, more and more water, and then it it grows. And yeah, just like small consistent effort. Yeah, and for people um, about the comfort zone thing is. Sometimes there is either people who thrive on uh, risk taking, so they feel like they want to give up everything and just yeah. start with their dream. But yeah. then they might be taking a lot of other risks, like on their I don't know finances or emotionally, uh, or you know with their family dynamic things like that. And then you also have then people who are the opposite that have little risk uh, tolerance so they feel like anything that pushes them outside of their comfort zone is too risky and so they are kind of waiting for the perfect moment or the perfect situation to start that dream that they have so either you know when my kid is no longer uh, at home <laughs> like when they're 18 and yeah they're, don't live with me anymore or when I have lots of money that I can devote to my art let's say or that I can like put aside and um, not worry about bills for example or if I have like the perfect space the perfect studio the perfect um, you know for dance like you need a dance studio if I need to you know I can rent all the space that I want so many hours per week or if it's an art uh, practice that I have the perfect tools and the you know perfect I don't know paint and the perfect lights to all of these things we can always wait for the perfect conditions but that will never get us uh, far yeah. and will never get us started. Um, so, yeah, people who are, um, who, especially the ones that are very risk averse, just you have to start somewhere. You got to take a little bit of risk, meaning you start even if you don't have the perfect conditions, but also hang on if you feel you need that comfort or that, you know, so, you know even more than comfort if it's a necessity for you financially for example like stay with your day job it's not you don't have to devote 100 percent of your time to your art practice it can be just start with two hours a week or four hours a week divide that throughout the week for example yeah yeah and i love the consistency you said earlier and i also i i believe in like trying like people are just especially if it's they're new to, it's new to them they kind of like make some I, uh, excuses I mean I'm not really trying to say like it's it's bad but they really tend to like because of the fear I guess of like yeah. oh I don't have this or she was able to do this because she has the resources and I don't think I can and it's I know because I've, I've experienced it and in our previous conversation I think you've also kind of like had that same um, experience of just getting that first step of getting out of that mindset or that box and for you what do you think is your advice for those who are still in that box of having so many things piled up or not being able to get started because they have this oh I have a kid or my kid's still like young or I'm still studying I don't have enough money to really go and do what I want I can't be independent right now or yeah 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 for sure 
it's, I would say, always come back to that a um, little bit at a time. That really, it's very simple, but it makes makes a huge difference. And and one thing also that I would say you can do um, if you you know are a person who wants to have a creative um, career or an artistic career or you know have this dream that you want to start is to really um, take the time to be honest with yourself and set your priorities. And what I mean by that is not only look at like all the responsibilities that you have in life, because we all have responsibilities, of course, yeah. some of us more than others, but also what is important for you almost selfishly, like what is important for you outside of the responsibilities that you have towards your family, towards your kid. And also, you know, especially if we have kids, I like to, to say and to remind myself too that our kids look at us, uh, you know, as examples. Um, and, you know, we would want them to succeed in their life. We want them to succeed at whatever they have chosen for, you know, for the career that they want. Even if it's hard, we would want them to succeed. So they look at us and if they see us not prioritizing our own uh, happiness, our own pleasure, our own satisfaction, then they're going to repeat that in their own life too. And I'm sure no parent wants to see their children give up on their dream. Yeah. Especially now, you know, perhaps past generations were different, <laughs> you know, it's a different mentality. But I think nowadays, yeah, we want to see uh, our kids happy and our kids also want to see us happy. And even if, you know, you don't have kids, still the same thing applies is, Look at what is important to you as an individual that will help you, um, yeah, be more fulfilled in your life. Because when you are more fulfilled, you have more joy, you have more, you know, happiness with you. And so that also um, affects the people that are around you. Like you, you, you act with them differently. Um, if you keep saying no to yourself all the time you create a, like uh, a tension within you because there's a part of you that really wants it but then you just keep telling it no like stay put I'm not it's not gonna happen and then there's almost like a resentment that uh, builds up inside of you and then that uh, starts to affect the relationships that you have with the people that are close to you and that kind of um, anger almost, that you're feeling because you're repressing that desire that you have in you then starts to um, to express itself with the relations that you have like around you with the people around you. So if you do um, listen to that voice inside you that tells you what you really want, despite all the fears that you have, you know, the fear of failure, the fear of judgment, yeah. the fear that nobody's going to understand what you do. I don't know if you're a coach, for example, or that nobody's going to take you seriously because you want to be, you know, an artist and nobody in your family or your surroundings are artists. Or, you know, if you want to have a, uh, a career like, I don't know, in social media or something like that, and you think that people are going to say that it's all oh, social media is nothing or yeah yeah so if you listen to that little voice within you that tells you okay this is really what you need and you uh yeah you go forward despite the fear then you're going to feel a lot more at peace and you're going to bring more joy to yourself <laughs> you know you Live a happier life, and people around you are going to be happier with you. That's true. <laughs> everybody wins. Yeah, everybody wins. Yeah. yeah, and that that is really true because I've seen someone who's. It's not more of like they're grumpy. It's just that they're unfulfilled. Mm -hmm. They're they're trying to go in this cycle of waking up, going to um, work, or going into whatever they're going, and then. Um, yeah sleep go back home and sleep and that's just like the routine and then have like two or one day off every week and it's it's just not fulfilling for them or they don't feel any 
they, I mean, they could be happy by going like buying stuff or hanging out with someone, but it, it, it's the life that they're living that they just don't see it. And it's really a good um, thing for those also who are still in fear, but know what they want. But what about mm. those who are like been into the, the growing an environment where they're being fed of this is what's good for you. This is what's good for you. And they weren't able to really know what they want for themselves or they have so many things they want because then they were so restricted growing up. And for you, how do you think they should go over into like finding what they really love? Because then they're going to be so overwhelmed. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love this because they yeah. didn't experience it before. Like they want to paint or they want to go to music. They want to um, dance or any of that because th they weren't able to do that before and yes yeah, so what would you think how do they go and look at themselves and find like one thing for them or if they could do or if they could do too or yeah 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 no, that's also another great question yeah you know I think it's to find ways to know yourself so you have to take the time to to um, figure out what is it that you like. And yeah, especially with all the conditioning that can come from family or mm -hmm. society, sometimes we we don't even know what we like, like who we are outside of what our family says we should be or what the society says we or our culture says we should be. So yeah, definitely there's gonna be a moment where you kind of feel lost. And I think it's okay. It's okay to be in that space for a bit. Uh, and it's probably going to feel scary <clears throat> and maybe like dark. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe not. But um, yeah, it's to take the time to try things. Like if you, you know, if you feel like, oh, maybe I want to try doing this, then try it. And then if you feel like, okay, this is something I'd like to continue, continue. Or if you feel like, no, it's really not for me, then you stop. And then you try something else. I think it's really to try and trial try and error. error. Yeah, a lot. Um, and I think like, you know, deeply inside, you kind of know what you want. Um, and maybe, you know, maybe a question that you can ask yourself is almost like, what is the thing that scares you the most? That, mm -hmm. you know, when you think about like, you feel this like, you know, butterflies in your stomach and like you feel really scared, almost like when you're in love. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so you really, you know that this is what you want, but at the same time, there's like a part of you that's telling you, no, you shouldn't. Like, it feels like it's too far. Yeah. It's too far from your reality. I think that's, that's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's, yeah, to, to look at that. Definitely just find ways to spend time with yourself and do some introspection or however you do it. You know, you don't have to think. You can also be like doing things that are fun for you, things that bring you pleasure, bring you joy. And and there's no um, no pressure also to like finding the thing right away. Yeah. You can also try something like, like this is I find what's the beautiful thing about online business is because especially like if you don't have, you know, with the brick and mortar or you have so many costs that are associated with that. Uh, but an online business, it doesn't cost much really to start to launch a business. So if you feel like there is something that interests you, um, you can start, you know, start it, try it. And then you see, and that's what I say always is you have to take action. You can't just stay in your mind uh, because that's where you're going to get stuck. Uh, you will never try anything. And then you'll just have all these arguments in a way in your head, but you got to act. You got to make a decision and just try. And then when you act and you try the thing, then you see if it's working. And if it is, you continue. If it's not working, then you adjust. Sometimes, you know, lot, you know, with business also, there's so many other things like that are involved, but um, yeah, so keep trying and then you can always change your mind. It's not a big deal. Yeah, that's what yeah. I would say. Yeah. 
That's a great one. Thank you. That's really amazing. And I mean, that's an awesome way of seeing it, of like, just, just try and just, if this doesn't work, just go and do the other one. Just like, take it easy. Just be yourself. And um, that, that puts less pressure on the other person to really get to know themselves and really find what they want. And you also mentioned about the online part, like the, trying to go into the online business, which is one of the like trending nowadays because of the pandemics everyone just went online and I've known a lot of people who one of the thing that they're really scared of putting themselves online is that they can't see the other person or they don't um, see the other side of the screen and they can't really read the face or um, know the person they're reaching out to or just basically starting their new career online and how do you what do you think is like the how do you think they could conquer this kind of fear? Do you have any advice when, on that side? Yeah, yeah, that's great. You have such great questions. I Thank love you. It. <laughs> Based on experience, mostly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Great, great, awesome. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, for me, the the online part, the way that I use it for for my business in coaching, but also with the dance, is the marketing part, really. Uh, because, I mean, you know, of course, the coaching, I do it online. So I see people on Zoom. I work yeah. with clients on Zoom. Um, but then you see the person. It's like we're having a conversation now. So, you know, we see each other. At least there is that. Um, yeah. But with the marketing on social media specifically, where you don't see the other, I think maybe that's what you were thinking about. Maybe when you ask that question. Um, yeah, yeah, it's just basically different factors. Like, for example, when they start working or they start applying for jobs, they don't really know or they can't see the person yet. Or when they start right. um, marketing themselves or getting themselves out online, just online, it put, setting up their profile. One of the things that they kind of like have a fear of is they don't know who's looking. So, right. like, yeah, yeah, that's mostly yeah. the part of it. Yeah, 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 that's great. Yeah, yeah, I think that for sure for me is um it's like a mental game so it's mindset i would say it's a mindset game or not game but you know um a practice to um to really believe in the best intentions of people and to believe that you know you can call it whatever you want the universe god <laughs> love whatever you want is there um they want to see you succeed Life wants you to succeed. I like to think that. So when I put myself out, you know, there on social media, of course, there's so many people who can be watching, you know, what I put out. And I always come with kind of the best intentions, um, with an open heart and with love. I, I want to serve with love. And so because of that, I think it brings back this love in return. Um, so I think it's really important how we show up. If we show up with, I don't know, you know, some kind of negative energy, energy. that maybe, that's what, yeah, exactly. That's what we might be attracting. But um, yeah, a trust in your audience, trust in what you're offering, trust in yourself. Like these three things are super important. Um, when you put yourself out there, online and social media but also in general because social media or online is just kind of a um a reflection of the world at large even in real life yeah um and you know one thing that i can say also especially as you start is that you have in a way the gift of being not very visible <laughs> And what I mean by that is because you have a small audience, usually you don't have like tons of people watching. You don't have tons of followers. It means that you can make tons of mistakes. Yeah. And it's okay. It's not going to like affect so many people. Uh, there will be less people who might be, you know, there to say negative things about you if you make a mistake. So I think like to get over that fear, maybe it's to just think that like now when you're starting, is the time to make all the mistakes that you can. Because if you, uh, you know, try to again, like to be super, super um, 
protective yeah, of how you so yeah like perfectionist then maybe later when you are grown more that's when like when yeah you'll have more to lose in a way versus now where you have almost nothing to lose so just go for it yeah yeah that's what i would say yeah i love that and uh, i i agree with like just having to like small space you can do trial and error you can experiment first because then no one's really there to i mean there is but it's still small space for you so you can try and try until you find what you really love doing or try where you fit in and yeah that's... yeah definitely yeah yeah and you know like for example for myself uh, um with my newsletter for example i um i just sent a newsletter um out yesterday but um I realized that when I first started uh, that newsletter specifically with the list, it started with about the dance projects. And then I started to add another um, a practice that I was doing a somatic movement practice. So then already there was a shift and then I shifted it again to the coaching. So, you know, I have changed, but people are still there. Yes, I have lost some people, but I actually, because I asked people to unsubscribe like I, I send them emails telling them if this does not resonate with you or if like this is not what you're looking for please unsubscribe I don't want you <laughs> in my life um but most of them has have you know are still there so people people usually follow there and it inspires them also when you try things um and you come out of your own comfort zone it actually gives them permission too to try and be, you know, come out of their of their comfort zone to try things. It's inspiring, I think. Yeah. Yeah, it is. And I've been inspired by a lot of those people. Of like I follow and I still stick no matter how they shift with their career or the industry that they work in, as long as I felt like I resonate with them, not maybe the industry, but how they are as a person. And yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. It's been like an amazing um, conversation that we had. I really was excited to hop on a call because I felt like we resonate in a term of like getting out of that comfort zone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Thank you so much, yeah. Chris, for inviting me. It was a real pleasure to chat with you. And yeah, great questions. I love them all. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So now we're down to three um, ending questions. I call them ending questions. So what's your favorite mantra? What's my favorite mantra? Yeah. <laughs> well, I do practice meditation. So there is a mantra that I repeat, <laughs> but I will not tell you what that is. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, or like a motto, maybe like something that I tell myself. Yeah, that could be a motto or that could be like yeah. a, a thing that you have like claim for the universe and just do it yeah. every day or uh, yeah. Yeah. I would say is be yourself. Just be yourself. Yeah. You can only be you. <laughs> That's yeah. true. That's true. And I guess the second one is what advice would you give to your 15 years old self? Mm -hmm. It's an advice that I actually got from someone uh, before, but it's that it's... um. Everything that you wish for, it will happen. So oh, don't worry. It's going to happen. You yeah. will become this, this, this. Like all the things that you want, it will happen. Yeah. I'm claiming that also. I love that. <laughs> I'm going to write out yes. pro just to get over it. Like this recording and write it up. <laughs> and the last one is how can people reach you? And if you have any courses, programs, that they could go into if they really are interested in your services or just if they have questions about like um, anything that you were offering. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So I have a website. It's um, fluidsoma.com. I don't know if you're going to share it or no. Um, uh, yeah, I'm going to be putting them down below in the description or if this is, if you're watching YouTube, it's going to be in the description also. Awesome. Awesome. Great. Yeah. And also you can find me on Instagram at fluidsoma.miriam. Um, and I write 
now what I offer is uh, coaching one-on-one -on -one with people. It's for three months. And um, yeah, I focus mainly on people from the global majority. And I have um, pay what you can pricing for people who are um, in need of that. And then also a regular pricing. And you can find all the information on my website. Yeah. Awesome. You guys check it out. That's definitely, if this is for you, then feel free to go and connect with Miriam. <laughs> Great. Thank you so much, Chris. Thank you. That's all for today's episode of Savvy Talks. We hope you enjoyed the conversation and learned something new to help you on your online money-making journey. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast so you never miss an episode. And if you found today's episode helpful, please leave us a review. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you next time on Savvy Talks.